Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Um, been a while since I've done a video. I may be a little rusty, bear with me. And I'm doing this on my phone for a change because my phone has a better camera than the cameras that I have because I haven't updated my filming equipment in forever. Anyways, be that as it may, uh, I'm Jesse. I'm affectionately known as Heavy lately, I guess. <laughs> uh, and this is Heavy Hammer Bushcraft. This is going to be my new gig and uh, my buddy Hammer. The other part of Heavy Hammer. We'll probably be making some appearances here and there, doing some spots with me and whatnot. Um, but I just kind of wanted to do a little quick video, uh, talk about what I'm doing. My first big project that I'm working on, which is a big project, I guess, but isn't that big. Um, my, my cat may interrupt, but we're going to hope not. Uh, started a blog over at Blogspot. It's uh, Heavy Hammer Bushcraft, blogspot.com, whatever. I'll link down there in the box somewhere um and uh i don't know we've been really getting back into the whole bushcraft thing lately which i you know i did most of my early life i did and i've kind of stayed into here and there um not as heavily as i would have liked to but now i'm back into it pretty heavy and uh <laughs> heavy <laughs> and um well i i've, I've got some things i want to try out uh, lately, and this is my first big, uh, my first big thing that I'm doing in my blog post over at uh, Heavy Hammer Blogspot. Um, proving Nesmuk is what I'm calling it. I don't know if you've ever heard of Nesmuk. I mean, he's kind of big in the uh, bushcraft community. At least his writings are. I mean, he's been dead for over 100 years, I think. But he was a, a bushcrafter from the northern wilderness, Ohio, New York, Pennsylvania, that area, the Adirondack Park. Um, and avid avid canoeist um one of the uh one of the biggest uh um what's the word i'm looking for <laughs> one of the biggest advocates for uh light canoes and very lightweight canoeing his last canoe which is i believe on display in the adirondack experience museum in blue mountain lake new york it was 10 and a half pounds um and all wood so it was kind of a unique thing for his time in the late 1800s um Gotta stop with the um. I used to do that all the time, and I'm back at it, I guess. Anyways, <laughs> Proving Nesmuk is a series I'm going to do because I've seen a lot of his uh, his information called into question, particularly the weights of his gear and the weights of his pack and whatnot. And it's kind of it's kind of maddening to think that, you know, people don't think it's possible to do what he did. And granted, a lot of us bushcrafters are not going to be from that area of the world. And it is kind of a very unique area to be bushcrafting in. There's a lot of water, a lot of foliage, a lot of ground cover, a lot of game. It's it's definitely un a unique area, especially once you get up into the Adirondack Park, which is where I grew up and spent most of my early life up until about somewhere in my 30s, really. So, you know, it's a unique area and it does kind of lend itself to... Whoa, that was the cat. Get down. Get down. Dang. I don't have to work on that. Anyways, um, the first thing I'm working on in improving Nesmuk is Nesmuk's ditty bag, which he called. It was a little small four by six pouch made of chamois leather. Um, chamois leather is extremely light. Uh, two and a half square yard, two and a half square foot piece of chamois leather is only uh, 2.4 ounces, give or take. He says his whole ditty bag pouch was two and a half ounces including all the stuff that was in it now the stuff that was in it really wasn't that extensive it was just kind of like a little miscellaneous pouch I mean, it's it's a ditty bag is what they are he had a dozen fish hooks uh small to medium size and everything down to like minnow hooks uh four strength four four loops of six yards each of fishing line up to 10 pound test um let's see the fish hooks the fishing line uh a darning needle some darning yarn um, several small sewing needles, some sewing silk or sewing thread. Um, good Lord, I forgot. A dozen buttons, uh, some sticky, sticky salve, which is a, uh, healing salve for small injuries and stuff like that, which I've actually had to make because you can't just go out and buy this. I suppose I could have used Neosporin or something, but I wanted to try to be as authentic as possible. Uh, he also had shoemaker's wax. Um, I can't find it. So I substituted fixin' wax. Uh, if you don't know what fixin' wax is, it's, uh, beeswax and tallow beeswax and lard something like that some combination thereof there's a few videos on youtube and a, probably a million different recipes for it different ways to make it works really good for uh preserving high carbon steel axe handles wooden handles knife handles such like that so that's really you know a good thing to have with you so i, I made that um or i'm making that currently actually is not quite done yet um uh da, 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 da. 
and you know a few other little miscellaneous things a small file for sharpening the fish hooks um yeah a couple other things there's a full list on the blog post and i will do a video on the ditty bag itself which has the full list of contents and pictures and all that noise plus the actual weight i don't know that i'm going to get this to the two and a half ounce mark i don't know as i'm going to be able to meet that mark and that's all right with me. I'm not, I'm not out to get it to exactly two and a half ounces. I'm not out to completely prove this theory. I'm out to prove or disprove. Um, because if I can't get it to two and a half ounces, then I'm willing to agree that Nesma could not either. Uh, materials haven't changed that much in a lot of these things. Um, the fishing line is probably the biggest change. Fishing line was obviously braided horsehair back in his day in the 1850s and 1860s, all through the late 1800s, until the advent of monofilament fishing line. Um, I found braided line. Obviously, it's available everywhere. However, I'm trying to do this kind of on a budget. I don't really want to spend a whole pile of money. And I didn't want to buy 150 yards of fishing line to use 24 yards of it. So instead of buying the $15 braided fishing line, I bought the $5 monofilament because there really isn't a significant amount of weight difference. And I actually think the, the monofilament is a tick heavier than the braid. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, there was some sinkers in the pouch too, a few small sinkers. So I've got some small sinkers, I've got the fish hooks, I've got pretty much everything I need. I bought chamois leather, so I'm gonna make the ditty bag out of the chamois leather as he would have had. His wouldn't have had a zipper, it would have been drawstring. So I'm gonna make a drawstring pouch as well. I'll probably use paracord or leather for the drawstring on it. But my goal is, obviously my goal is to prove that this can be done in the two and a half ounce package. Everybody else says the bag must have weighed two and a half ounces. No, chamois leather is not that heavy. Like I said, two and a half square feet is 2.4 ounces. So a four by six pouch, there's no way. It just, it didn't happen. Um, I've seen other posts where people have said, you know, he has the ditty bag and then he has another bag that goes with it that his ditty bag is always attached to on his hip. People are saying that the contents of both of those bags together was two and a half ounces. That's not the way it's proposed in the book. So that's not what we're going to go with. But we're going to go with the Diddy Bag contents, which he very clearly lays out. And very, I mean, there are a couple of exceptions. He says a few of this, a few of that. So I took it on myself to guesstimate, go for five of these things instead of, you know, 20 or 30. So hopefully that's how that's going to go. If it works well, if this goes well, if people enjoy this, if it seems to be something that people are into, then I will do more of his gear and maybe see if I can put together a full Nesma kit. But for now... That's kind of what I got, but I wanted to do a little introduction to the channel since I just created it, uh, just rolled the blog the other day, and uh, just kind of getting going with this. Um, like I said, my partner Hammer will probably be in on this here and there. You'll probably see some videos of, of us at our Bushcraft site. Um, we have, we're hopefully going to have two. Currently, we have one started. Um, there's a few pictures of that over on my Instagram, uh, GC 8-Bit at Instagram. I'll put it, yes, somewhere down there. Uh, we do have the Facebook page, facebook.com, Heavy Hammer Bushcraft. Um, and uh, is that it? I think that I think that's it for now. I think that's all I got. Um, as this goes on, I mean, do, we do have Heavy Hammer Bushcraft at gmail.com as an email address. So as this goes on, if you all have questions, if there's anything you'd like to say, comment, concerns, whatever, complaints, we'd like to hear it. We'd like to hear everything you've got. Uh, feel free to contact, contact us via any of those methods. And we'll try our best to get back to you. For now, though, I think that's I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got for now. So uh, enjoy. Hopefully, y'all like us. If you do, comment, like, subscribe, thumbs up, share the channel, spread the love, do what you got to do, and uh, we'll see you out in the woods. Thanks. Bye.